Oh no, it's Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Yoon. Uh, today I wanted to come here with a quick video uh, just talking about some of my expectations for some of the few upcoming games that are coming out. Um, I'm imagining uh, that you're going to talk about Shinobi Strikers and we're going to be talking about uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, first of all, let's start with Shinobi Strikers. What I want to see from this game. Uh, from the way the gameplay looks, I know it's unpolished and finished, but it looks like a kind of action adventure. Uh, type of game which I'm fine with because one of my favorite Naruto games was uh, the Broken Bond for for uh, the Xbox 360. Um, I hope we could do like co-op uh, Team Ninja mission battles and stuff like that. Um, it's nice to see a return to action adventure genre in the Naruto saga as opposed to the straight up fighting style. Don't get me wrong, I love the CC2 fighting games, but um, you know. After a while, it's nice to have a new IP and nice something different. And uh, speaking of new IPs, Dragon Ball Fighters looks amazing, obviously. Um, I'm not too worried about the roster because in those type of games, Arc System Works games, like I'm a huge fan of uh, Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear. Um, I really just want to see, I don't know, some uniqueness um, to each character, which I know I'm already going to see. I know I'm not going to get my hopes up and there's probably not going to be any Super Saiyan 4 or anything like that. But, um, you know, I'll be happy with what they give me, and I'll use that as a compendium to my universe, too. Uh, I still play Infinite World a lot, so it's not really going to be that big of a deal. What's up, guys? It's Mark Yoon, and uh, today we're going to talk about some Dragon Ball Super Episode 99 spoilers. Uh, I'm getting this information from Saiyan Island, so if anything of uh, the information that I suggest is wrong or anything, please leave a comment below. Uh, I'll be sure to change it. Uh, but generally, I find that they're pretty good source of information. Okay, so the 99 st spoilers start. By the way, this is going to be spoiler filled, so uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, you can just turn off the audio and enjoy the video. <laughs> but uh, besides that, Universe 9, gone by the hand of the Omni King. Okay, so Zeno pretty much wiped out Universe 9. Now, I tend to stay away from spoilers myself, but since I've started my YouTube channel, I've started getting into the spoiler-esque aspects of it because I remember I when I first started watching Dragon Ball I started first watching it in uh, around like 1989 1990 I started reading it in 1988 so it hadn't come to America yet and I haven't there was no way to be spoiled on anything because I was watching it as it was coming on the air um, I used to get pre-recorded um, TV VHS tapes from Japan that my parents would get me but um so, watching Dragon Ball Super is kind of exciting for me, well, past the first two sagas, which I really didn't enjoy, because uh, I own the movies, so I don't really care. Um, my opinion may be different from yours on that, but, um, I mean, it's just my opinion, so it doesn't really hold any weight, and I don't expect you guys to agree with that. But, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, is pretty much what I'm saying, so, um, spoiling myself to give you guys good YouTube videos is kind of hurting myself in the long run, because I really want to be surprised and have that same... Uh, wow factor that I experienced when I was growing up watching it and I don't get that when I spoil myself but um, I want to make sure you guys stay informed and I want to make sure that I can try to provide at least some kind of entertainment while you're doing that whether you're watching this video in the background doing something else or whatever but um yeah so getting into this yeah Zeno wiped out Universe 9 which came to a shock to me because the last episode that I've seen was episode um, 97, I believe. I did a review for it on my channel last week. Um, so I guess they lost, and I guess Zeno decided to wipe him out. And uh, the Annihilation of Universe 9, the article goes on to say, shows Goku and company just how harsh the tournament of power is. Yeah, well, <laughs> I wasn't expecting everything to be like peaches and cream and rainbows. And, uh, Something's going on with like the Angel, I swear. Something's going on with the Grand Priest. Something's going on with Zeno. A lot of people have this rumor that's been circulating, thinking that, um, I know I talked about this in my last video with Rich, but just to rehash it in case you didn't watch that. Uh, apparently some people are thinking that Zeno didn't wipe out Zamas when he wiped out that universe, that Zamas actually possessed Zeno's body and has been acting like he is, the same way he did with Goku. Uh, I don't know how much 
credence I can lend to that. I don't know how, like what's going on with that. Everybody has their own theories with it, and I don't really want to give my own hypothesis because it just might turn out to be wrong. So I'd rather just watch it as it comes, and if I get spoiled, I get spoiled. But that's the rumor. So there might be some subplots going on that we don't know about, and of course it's going to be an intense of the Tournament of Power. But this line has me really, really upset right here. I know a lot of, like, some people, like, commented on my last video saying that I was too harsh on Goku. And I'm not being harsh on Goku because Goku's a fictional character. I'm being harsh on the writers who are writing Goku into a corner that he probably can't fight his way out of. And he's got different characteristics and personality traits and quirks than he used to have. And to me, he's almost like an entirely different character who just resembles Goku. But, um, it says the Annihilation of Universe 9 shows Goku and company just how harsh the Tournament of Power is. Why is Goku <laughs> surprised by this? He's the one that started this whole Tournament of Power in the first place. So, literally, in my mind, anybody that dies, it's on his head. <laughs> like, seriously. But, whatever. Like, the writers can do what they want. As long as they tell me a good story, I don't care about, you know, too much about continuity and stuff like that. Because in the realm of Dragon Ball, uh, continuity is rarely ever a thing that's actually like forced upon uh, all right well the, the article goes on to say in the midst of a stalemate Goku and Vegeta get the fight started again as intense battles break out all over the place so we have more of a Goku and Vegeta go and add it to you know fight other people I doubt they're fighting together it's probably uh, one on one because they don't really want to really do anything together I'm sure Goku does but Vegeta is probably like no I'm not about that He's just pretty much there to protect Bra at this point. Or Bulla, I'm sorry. Um, so, it says Vegeta trades blows with Universe 6's Butamo and Megeta. Um, he already fought Megeta. <laughs> so unless Megeta learned anything new, I don't really care. And I think that he didn't because this next statement says he has a tough fight against Butamo, who is increasingly uh, not taking any damage from Vegeta's fierce attacks. Well, we all know about Butamo's, like, kind of dimensional distortion abilities, or whatever, his key absorption, whatever you want to call it. That's cool. Um, first of all, I hope Vegeta beats the crap out of Butamo, because I can't stand Butamo. He's, like, my least favorite of the new super characters. I know everyone says he looks like Fat Winnie the Pooh, but I think he looks like base form Janemba. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just, I can't stand him. Uh, Megeta's kind of cool. I kind of like the whole idea of his race and stuff like that, so uh, I would like to see another fight against Super Saiyan Blue um, Vegeta versus Megeta. Maybe he's having trouble with both of them because maybe he's conserving his uh, key and not transforming into a blue and fighting both at the same time using just base Super Saiyan. I'm not sure. The article doesn't say that. I'm just speculating. Um, but yeah, I would understand him having a tough fight against both of them at the same time if he's not using blue. But I think at this point, after his training, if he transforms into blue, they're both, like, screwed. And no matter how much damage Butamo can, like, send to the other dimension or whatever, I don't know if he can handle actual Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. But this whole statement may be false because he may be in blue. I'm not sure yet. I'll find out when the episode airs, uh, just like most of you will. And then uh, we continue with, Meanwhile, Android 18 is in a tight spot as she battles Shoisha. How do you pronounce that? It's S-H-O-I-S-H-A. Shoisha? Shoisha? I don't know, I'm usually pretty good with Japanese names, but that doesn't... Shoisha. We'll just say Shoisha. Uh, who, if I get that wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, leave a comment below and tell me what the proper pronunciation is if, if they actually say it, or I'll look out for it myself. Who is a warrior of Universe 4. Her husband, Killin, her husband Krillin flies to rescue her. Okay, so it's talking about as from Andrew and King's perspective. Her husband Krillin flies to a rescue as the husband and wife power explodes. Um, so I expected them to team up. That's not anything that I wouldn't expect to see. It is pretty cool, but I'd actually rather see 17 and 18 team up. Because uh, that would be really cool to see Lapis and her out again and see if they could still do that synchronized fighting style they did against Future Trunks and go on. I would really love to see that. Uh, Krillin's cool. I like him, but like pretty much beyond like Solar Flare, Tienzen, and, and Kamehameha, like he he's got nothing unless he's like using a battle whip, which they really only ass pulled in Super because in Z he's never done anything like that. 
whatever. I mean, the only last time I remember him using his brain was in Dragon Ball when he was actually trying to find the stone when uh, him and Goku first met Master Roshi to decide who would become the disciple. And um, he kept using all these like deceitful tricks, like r duplicating the rock by using a magic marker to write on it to trick Goku into thinking he had it. All that stuff you remember. But um, okay, so we're gonna move on from that point. Android 18, Krillin, and Vegeta are the only ones in the heat of battle. Goku, Frieza, and the others also challenge various universes to battle. Beerus is hostile towards Universe 6 is Champa. Well, I mean, it's not like Champa and Beerus are actually friends. So, like, I mean, like, they're they're people. Here's here's something that I want to put out there. A lot of people keep on insinuating that they're actual brothers. Like, they have the same mom and they're actual brothers. That's, in my opinion, not the case. When they were originally talking about the new universes, they were talking about it as sets. So out of the 12 universes, there's six sets, and each set has an almost identical universe. So its twin universe, quote unquote, is um, universe, um, ours is obviously universe six, because we're universe seven, technically. I mean, we're not, but you know, Goku and them. They're not, they're like, Champa is the alternate version of Beerus. It's Beerus in a different universe, like if things had gone a different way, if choices had been done differently. Just like, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware that Frost is the alternate version of Frieza. Like, it's not like he just gets along well with other, like, Arcosians or Frost Demons, whatever. Like, we've seen him interact with them before. True, it wasn't canon, but I don't care about the stupid canon word. He seems to have more animosity towards them than anybody else because they can threaten his power, I guess. But he gets along fine with Frost. Um, I don't know, I may be wrong on that point. Uh, I don't think I am, but, you know, there's always the option that I am. So, I just want to put that out there. Like, they, they're alternate versions of each other, which is why their personalities are such alike. They're not different people. Um, orig that's originally what it was intended to be. Now, seeing the other universes... <coughs> excuse me. Now, seeing the other universes interact... I haven't seen that twinning or pairing anymore, so I think after Universe 6 and 7, they wanted to kind of get away with that, like they wanted to kind of move away from that and go in a different direction, so maybe now they are changing it, the writers, to make it be like their actual brothers, but I, from what I remember, that's not what they originally intended. But anyway, going back to that, a poor Shampa would have some animosity towards Beerus. Uh, it says, like, it, the article goes on to say, the gods watch the progress of the Tournament of Power battles from the benches. While feeling antagonistic towards Universe 6's God of Destruction, Champa, Beerus gives his team some advice. Well, he should be giving advice against any team, but okay, of, of course against Champa, he'd want them, you know, because they have this competition where they want to get up one up on each other. And it says, what does Beerus say to his Universe 7 warriors? How will Goku, Vegeta, 18, Krill, and the others fare? We'll have to watch Dragon Ball Super Episode 99. Uh, the episode titled, Show It Off, Krillin's Reserves of Strength. Um, and it says it airs on July 16th, 2017. Um, so, okay, this article is not too, too spoilery, but, um, it gave us a lot of good information, uh, I guess. <laughs> like, the fight with Botamo against Vegeta, and, um, they didn't really mention Megeta after that point that much. I'm thinking that Vegeta pretty much has him on the ropes, being that he fought him before, and he pretty much knows how to, to deal with him at this point, his techniques. 18 team with Krillin seems awesome. Um, I, w I would love to see that. I just want to see how they combine their powers. Like, it seems like 18 would be so much stronger than Krillin. I may be wrong, but that's what it seems like to me. So if it's like him, like like her going forward and lunging at the, the target, you know, and just doing like a flurry of punches and kicks while Krillin jumps up in the air and sends like Kienzens and you know, solar flares at her and stuff like that to distract her while 18 can actually move her for the attack. That's what I would think that would be, and that would be pretty cool to see. Like I said, I'd much rather see her with uh, Lapis, but, you know, whatever. Um, overall, 99 seems like it's going to be a pretty exciting episode. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. And, um, yeah, I guess that's it for this, uh, this future, <laughs> this preemptive episode 99 spoiler review. So if you guys like this video, please remember to drop a like, uh, leave a comment. I'd always appreciate to respond with you guys and talk about what you want to see in future videos. Uh, you're the only reason I'm making this channel, so you're the only way that I can grow to reach more people. 
Uh, try to share this video if you can. If you have any suggestions, you know, send me a message or send me a comment. Um, I'm also on uh, Instagram at mark.yoon.art, and I'm also on um, Dragon Ball Z Amino. I'm the leader of uh, Orange Star School on there. I don't, if you don't know what that is, Amino is like an online community, um, pretty much for just Dragon Ball fans. And I, it's a pretty fun thing, so you should check it out if you get the chance. But anyway, that's all I got to say for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, do all the following things we've always been talking about. And um, I would love to get more feedback from you guys. So as always, stay powered up, guys. Peace.